So let's continue with our discussion of the Mandukya Upanishad Karika and its commentary by Shankaracharya, which is really amazing and wonderful. You should use the link in the video description to download the text and read it for yourself. I mean, really, you should study it deeply because it has all the secrets about non-duality and the truth of enlightenment. And really, this is the core of Ramana Maharshi's teaching, although he rarely mentioned it. The Mandukya Upanishad is really the essence of the Upanishads. It has the core teaching of Vedanta, which is then extrapolated and added to in the various other Upanishads and even Vedas and Vedanta and Puranas and so on. So really, if you know this truth, you know everything. And everything else is simply an addition or explanation of it. So let's look at verse 238. Tattvam adhyasmikam drishtva, tattvam drishtva tu bahyataha. Tatvi bhutas tad aramha, tatvad apratyuto bhavet. Seeing the truth of what exists internally, as well as the truth of what exists externally, he becomes one with truth, derives pleasure from it, and never fails to be situated in truth. This is a wonderful shlok. Very simple grammatically, but extremely profound in its meaning. First, tattvam adhyasmikam drishtva. He sees the adhyatmic truth. Adhyatma means inside, the internal truth. And what is that? Aham brahmasmi. I am Brahman. I am pure awareness without an object. I am without qualities. I am one. There is nothing except myself. And then he sees the outside. What does it say? Tattvam drishtva tu bahyata. That he sees the external truth, the truth of the mind, the senses, the body, and the other sense objects, the world and so on. And what is that? <laughs> that is also Brahman. Tattvamasi, thou art that. I am that, and you are that. I am Brahman, everything else is also Brahman. This is the truth, with a, with a capital T. So, then what? Tatvibhutas, he becomes truth. He realizes, I am the truth. I am the reality. And because of that, Tadaramaha, he derives great pleasure. And finally, Tatvad Aprachito Bhavet, he never fails to be situated in truth or to realize that he is the truth, bhavet. So this is the uh, realized being. This is the jivatmaka, the jivanmukta, one who knows the self. And this is the goal, actually, of all religion, and especially the Vedas, who are uh, best source of this non-dual truth. 
In other religions, in other traditions, especially like the Western mystery traditions, it's a big secret. And actually, the Upanishads were held in secret for a long time in the past, in previous yugas. But in Kali Yuga, the truth is shouted from the rooftops. Because in Kali Yuga, there are so many problems, so many difficulties, so many obstacles to realizing the truth. So there's extra special mercy, and the truth is made as accessible as possible. Oh, you can even look at videos on YouTube and hear the truth. <laughs> of course, there are also counterfeits, and this is a big problem in Kali Yuga, that uh, the Buddha said the most uh, damaging or most difficult obstacle in the pursuit of truth is the creation of a counterfeit truth. How does that work? Well, in principle, it's very simple. That one takes the statements, the authoritative statements of the Shastras and of the realized souls and simply redefines the terminology. See, this is why I'm so insistent on finding the correct definitions of terms. Because the way that unscrupulous people create a counterfeit religion is by redefining the terminology. I'll give you an example. When I was in ISKCON, the primary practice of the Gaudiya Vaishnava movement going back thousands of years, really, but especially since Lord Chaitanya about 500 years ago, the main process is called Sankirtan. Sankirtan means to get together in a group and chant the names of God congregationally. So in the beginning of ISKCON, when Srila Prabhupada was firmly in charge of it, we used to go out in groups to crowded places where there were lots of people with drums and cymbals and other instruments and just chant the mantra for hours. Now, this is Sankirtan. This is the real process of the Hare Krishna movement. But then, as Prabhupada uh, became old and infirm and eventually left his body, other leaders took over. And what they did was slowly transform the meaning of Sankirtan to mean distributing books. And anybody who has any experience with this knows that the ISKCON people were extremely aggressive and unscrupulous in the use of um, deceptive tactics, to put it bluntly, uh, and would just want to distribute books at any cost and get any kind of donation that they could. And because of these unscrupulous tactics, people lost faith in the movement. You know, I, I went out one time I remember it was must have been like 1969, 1970. I went out with one sank, so-called Sankirtan group and they were distributing books and they were telling people, we're feeding kids in Vietnam. It was during the time of the Vietnam War. We're feeding young kids orphans in Vietnam. This was the line, and it was absolutely untrue. We didn't even have a temple in Vietnam, <laughs> you know? So this is one example of how uh, spiritual terminology is redefined and leads to the downfall and pollution and corruption of a spiritual tradition. Another good example is Ramana Maharshi's teaching. And Ramana Maharshi's process is known as Atma Vichara. Atma Vichara means actually meditative inquiry into the nature of the self. Meditative inquiry. That means you sit down and you look inside and you try to see who am I? What am I? Where do I come from? Why am I here? 
What is my actual purpose? What am I meant to do? What is the self? How can I attain the self? What does it mean to attain the self? So on and so forth. Inquiry, investigation. But over time, this has become changed to simply uh, what we would call a show bottle process. My Adi Guru, Srila Prabhupada, was a pharmacist, and he used to tell how uh, druggists and pharmacists have bottles, apparently, of medicines and preparations, and they put them in the window to show this is what's for sale. And this is called a show bottle. And the thing is, they don't have real medicine in them. They only have colored water. And the reason for that is that light, especially sunlight, degrades the active principles, the chemicals in the medicine or the herbs or whatever. And so you have to have, for display, you have to have show bottles so that the real medicine isn't diluted or depleted. Very good example. So what happened in Tiruvannamalai is that Ramana's teaching, his slogan of Atma Vichara, and who am I, became a show bottle. It had the same name, the same label, but the contents were changed. Instead of medicine, only colored water. People were taking his teaching and presenting it as a mere verbal exercise. Uh, because we all know who we are verbally. We can say, I am Brahman. You know, it's easy, right? But that doesn't mean you actually realize it. The realization has to be carried out by hard work over many years, especially for Western people who are extremely conditioned. But what has happened now is that it has been rebranded it has become a counterfeit of its actual self. And it's simply a, a show bottle, verbal process. Who am I? In fact, there are even people <laughs> who go around chanting, who am I, as a mantra, which is ridiculous, of course. The actual Atma Vichara means you have to sit down and look into it for yourself, not simply adopt a verbal or intellectual conclusion and say, okay, now I know. No, you don't. <laughs> it's phony. It's show bottle. So the greatest obstacle is that and the same thing happened with Buddha's teaching. Buddha's teaching means you have to go and sit down in a lonely place and look into yourself. This is Raja Yoga, meditation. But now it has become like a churchy thing where everybody goes to socialize, eat and drink nice food, and make a few little token offerings to the statue of Buddha, which if Buddha ever saw this, he would freak out. Buddha was so strict, he didn't even allow people to take notes of his discourses. What to speak of, make a painting or a statue of him and worship it. I mean, that's just completely outside of Buddha's teaching. But this is what is known as Buddhism today. And of course, every religion, we can find the same thing going on. Someone invents a counterfeit of the actual teaching, calls it by the same name, and promotes it in the place of the original teaching. So, one has to look very carefully into the literature and the original teachings. That's why I so much recommend the original Vedic literatures, the original Upanishads and Puranas. Go to the original text and find the real meaning. Put it into action. Put it into use in your life. And you will attain the supreme enlightenment, the Tattva Darshana, the truth. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.